So we've designed this course in three major sections. The first section is what do you need to know to get off the ground? The second section is what do you need to grow the business or scale the business? Section three, we felt, and I feel pretty strongly we need this, which is, hey, not what do we forget, but what more content can we add for you that will help add dimension to everything else? And, you know, things where we needed to go a little bit deeper, that type of thing. So chapter one, accounting and finance, we're going to kind of come, come back to this a little bit. You should have an accountant. To me, it's the single best source of information because that person represents not them, not what's in their brain, but all the businesses they've worked with. And we'll go through some definitional things too. For example, here, uh, we're going to just drill through things that you should probably know the definition of. Revenue sales is really just the amount of money your business has brought in from customers. It's sales, you know, it's not profit. It's just the amount of money that uh, you've brought in. It's on your income statement and it's the money you use to pay for your expensive. What I like about revenue, by the way, and I think it is an important metric, is it measures your market acceptance. So I don't say numbers don't lie. The Israelis said, actually, the Israelis said that, not numbers, but the, the Israelis said that there's three kinds of lies, lies, damn lies, and statistics. So some numbers do lie. But revenue I like because it's a, an objective measure of, uh, you know, the market acceptance you're getting from customers, which is really crucial. Expenses, next. Uh, it's the amount of money you spend to run your business. Uh, there's two types of expenses. Well, there's lots of different types of expenses, but we're breaking this down into something that hopefully makes some sense. There's fixed expenses and there's variable expenses. Fixed expenses like rent or phone, things like that, tend to stay the same no matter what your revenue is. Um, the reason fixed costs are important to know is uh, some people call that, your, call that your nut. In other words, what amount of money do you need to sell to just cover your fixed costs? Okay, so they're core costs that don't change very much. It's, it's really your overhead. So that's the first kind of cost. Your variable costs vary as sales go up. So a good example of that, if I'm running a convenience store and I sell gas, the more my revenue goes up, the more my gasoline expense probably goes up. Um, if I'm selling clothing, as my revenue goes up, my cost of goods sold for buying the clothing probably goes up. Um, but these are, th this purpose of this is not to make you an accountant, but to just make you familiar with different terms that people might use. Oh, by the way, since we're in the finance area, and um, I'm probably our designated guy in the finance thing, uh, remember this, it's really true. I wish I could go back to school. When you were in school, the best teachers you had were excellent at making complicated things simple. So if you don't understand something in school, it's not you, unless you're not studying like me, I didn't study in high school. It's your teacher. So remember when you go to your accountant or you go to your banker, if you don't understand this stuff, it's not you. That doesn't make you stupid or um, that doesn't mean that you don't have skill in this area. It means that people are overcomplicating things. I've, I've uh, dedicated my life to trying to make finance understandable. But again, the purpose of this is just to give you some little bit of background in terms that people might throw at you that are not really that important, but to give you context. These expenses of fixed cost and variable costs give you insight into how much money you need to make per sale to be profitable. Um, but revenue and expenses appear on your income statement. That's the financial statement, okay? And the bottom line is you always wanna know how much you have to sell to, to make, make a profit. 
Profit is simply the difference between revenue and expenses. It appears on your income statement. To me, it's the most important number that you manage. It's, it's literally the bottom line. Profit equals net profit equals net income equals bottom line equals net income available to common. It's all the same thing. It's how much money are you making? One thing we're not going to address, though, because we don't want to make this a finance course, and I've seen the travails, I've seen the real problems of this. Often people think that if they're profitable, that they're doing well. Um, that is true most times. But if you have accounts receivable or if you're financing your customers and they're not paying you when you're selling stuff, you can still go out of business because if you're financing your customers and they're not paying you in a timely way, you may be profitable on your income statement, but you haven't collected that accounts receivable from your customer. Uh, in my, well, in a lot of experience now, really, I mean, we're talking decades, it's very rare that businesses aren't profitable because people have the common sense to know that your revenues have to be more than your expenses. What happens is they're not collecting their accounts receivable fast enough and they get into a cash flow pro problem. I think I'm going to talk about that later. Assets are stuff you own that you have title to. Um, they're, they're items you, you can make income from. So, so for some examples up here, cash, inventory, equipment, real estate, they appear on your balance sheet. And it's really just stuff you own. A liability is an amount of money you owe, an accrued amount that you owe as of a specific period of time. So rent expense is not a liability because that's just paid every month. But if you don't pay your rent for three months, that becomes rent payable, which is a liability. So liabilities appear on your balance sheet and they represent accrued expenses. Um, rent expense, since it's paid monthly, is an expense. But if you don't pay rent for three months, that represents a liability, a bunch of money that you owe. That's a liability. That's called rent expense payable, and that appears as a liability. So, for example, your mortgage payment per month is an expense. But if you don't, but the amount of money that you owe completely for that mortgage, your mortgage balance is a liability. Not an accounting course, but, and that's a little mentally hard to get your arms around if you're not an accountant or you're not familiar with it, but, but important. Um, student loan balance is a liability. If you're making student loan payments, those are expenses, but the balances are liabilities. On a balance sheet, the difference between assets and liabilities is what's called equity. All equity is is a catch-all term. Don't put any, I don't say meaning, well, yeah, really, don't put, don't overly put meaning to the term equity. It's catch-all. Assets, less liabilities, equals equity. And therefore, assets equals liabilities plus equity. But again, I don't want to blow anybody's mind, and, and I don't want to sound like a hotshot, because for those of you who are accountants, you know, this is real basic stuff. But I would want to mention this about equity. Too often people look at their balance sheet and they look at, at what is in the equity account and they think that's what their business is worth. Untrue. Even accountants do that. It's amazing to me. The equity account is just the difference between assets and liabilities. And the amount of assets may have nothing to do with the market value of those assets. So equity is not what your business is worth. It's just the difference between assets and liabilities. In the next section, we're going to talk about budgeting and forecasting. Um, again, not a finance course, but I do want to drill through this uh, quite a bit. A budget or a forecast is to help you look into the future and figure out what your revenue and your expenses are. It's to give you, it's to help you plan and to let you know 
how much money you might need to raise for capital. It'll let you know when there's shortfalls in cash flow. So you may need short periods of time where you need financing to pull yourself through. It lets you know what your profit is. It gives you an idea of how safe you are. Um, you know, in some ways, it's interesting after doing this for so many years, I would say, I'm not recommending this, but, but I would say, even if you didn't have a balance sheet, an income statement, or a statement of cash flow, even if you didn't understand any of that, if you had a good budget or forecast, you could run your, your business because your financial statements are based upon what's happened in the past. Your budget or your forecast, you can't change that. At least I don't think you can. I don't think there's time machines that work. You can't change that. Your budget and your forecast is, ba is really telling you what's going to happen. So you're planning. And I really love especially a good 12-month forecast, month by month. Um, some people do them for two years. Things change a lot in two years. But a great forecast month by month is very helpful. So we're showing one on the screen right now because what we really want to do is give you a tangible example of a good or a decent forecast. You'll notice on the top line um, the word revenue or sales. That's the amount of money that you're bringing in from customers each month. And then you'll see that we forecasted out 12 months. And there's a total for the year. But we're going to show no revenue in the beginning or very little revenue if it's a startup. And then at a certain point of time, it could be month three, month four, month five. It doesn't really matter. You'll see on the screen now how we did it. But you might start getting revenue. And that's the amount of money you're bringing in month by month. Okay, it's cash revenue. By the way, important, on your budget and your forecast, I like cash forecasts. I don't want to know what my sales are if the customer hasn't paid me. And I'm going to mention this later on. I want to know what the cash in is, cash out. So in some ways, the best forecast I look for is a cash forecast, right? So that's the first number. Underneath that, you're going to see this term that's called expenses. We've defined that. And again, we go month by month. You'll notice in month one, right, there are expenses. I mean, just because you don't have revenue doesn't mean you don't have expenses. You're going to have expenses. Your expenses might be less, but you're going to have them. So we go month by month by month, showing expenses for each month. You'll see those growing. And then what you see here is fictional. We've only given you an example. But you'll see by the end of the year that the sales will start to approximate the expenses. And you'll have a little bit of a profit number, a little bit of a loss number at the end. That's the final number. Remember, the difference between revenue and expenses is profit. But you'll see we're losing a lot of money in the beginning. And then that we move toward what's called break even later in the forecast. And then at the end, maybe there's a little bit of profit left. I have to, I don't want to get off this too early. I mean, whether you know, know the definition of a balance sheet or not is not that important to me. It, understanding this diagram or understanding this dynamic is very important to me. I have personally never seen a forecast for a new business that did not show at least break-even pro break profit the first year. Um, I'm not sure why. I do, I do the same thing. Sometimes it can take two or three years for that business to break even, which means where the sales equal the expenses. So this is just one example. And you really have to think hard about how long it will be for you to break even or make profits. Uh, this is where having a friend, a mentor, someone who was in a similar business would help, and a, definitely an accountant, to sit down with you and say, you know, it's interesting. You're showing a profit in the first month. That may be possible. By the way, I did that in the laundromat business. I had to. 
I had to break even in the first month because I needed that money to pay bills. But that's very rare. So it's good to understand your business relative to other businesses like yours because some businesses are going to take two years to break even, some three years. I think at Sagebrook, it took us like six or seven years. So we needed external financing, okay? Although I think we could have just tightened up our expenses. Anyway, different subject, different time. So in the diagram, you'll see an example, and it's only an example of a forecast. Um, if you're not experienced with forecasting and budgeting, this is why God invented accountants. It's a great thing to do. You could come up with something like this and go to an accountant and get some expertise or advice on your um, forecast. But the forecast is looking forward. That's why it's very powerful. Also, in case we don't dwell on it or it doesn't come up, remember, if you don't have resources, in every state in America, there are free sources of information for you. There are people who will help you start your business, and you don't have to pay them. I love SCORE, S-C-O-R-E. I used to work with those uh, fellows um, years ago. Um, and it stands for Service Corps of Retired Executives. They basically volunteer their time to help small businesses. Um, very good experience. They don't charge you anything. It's through the SBA. Many states have small business centers or small business development centers. Again, there's no charge. I would dare to say all states in the U.S. have free sources of information where you can come with your forecast and get some help on your budget and your forecast. In the next section, we're going to talk about uh, types of taxes. Well, and I want to give you some personal stories on this, too. If you are in business, you're going to have to be, you're going to, you, you will be required to file taxes of some, some sort. I'm going to list them down and then we'll talk about them a little bit. You got excise taxes, which are basically taxes paid when purchases are made. Like I always think about excise taxes being paid like on gasoline, real estate taxes, other property taxes registered in your county, sales taxes, income taxes, employer-related taxes. I'm probably going to roll back up a little bit here, but employer-related taxes are for when you have employees and you have to deduct money from their pay for their income taxes. Um, I've seen so many businesses get in trouble with employer-related taxes. Most business owners understand that if they earn 10 cents in profit, that they probably have to put some money aside to pay the income taxes. Where a lot of inexperienced entrepreneurs get in trouble is in employer-related taxes. So if you get an employee, my best recommendation is to take employer-related expenses and set that money aside in a separate account. And there's great services for this, by the way. There's paychecks, there's ADP. You shouldn't even have to do this. This should happen automatically. So you're never commingling employee taxes with your checking account. Oh, gee, there's been just so many people I know have run into problems with that. Rolling up the list a, a little bit, and then we'll, you know, we'll, I'm not going to beat a dead horse on taxes. Another way that self-employed people or entrepreneurs get in trouble is through income taxes. They don't get in trouble with income taxes as much as with employer taxes, but they do get in trouble. And here's how. If you are an employee, the employer is taking out taxes each period and sending those to the government to make sure you pay, pay your income taxes. If you're an employer and you're making profit each quarter, or even more often, I think, you have to estimate what your profit is and send those taxes to the government proactively. That's why please get an accountant because I have worked with so many people over the years where they don't set aside their estimated taxes 
And by the time the year comes around, they don't have any money to pay their income taxes. It's not that they went out and bought like a Ferrari, but they used that money during the year to grow their business. And they didn't set money aside to pay their income taxes. We are not lawyers. We are not accountants. Get good lawyers and get good accountants. Uh, and you can avoid lots of hassle. We're going to talk a little bit about financial analysis and break-even analysis. I don't want to get into this too much, but I think I do want to mention that I always want to know how much I, want, I need to sell in order to cover my costs, like how much revenue I need to do. Um, I love using laundromats as an example, by the way, because it, it's so nice. It's so simple. In the laundromat business, it was the coin laundromat business that I ran, I think in my late 20s, I, I can't remember. Um, I like that business because they're great examples. In the coin laundromat business, without you even knowing that business, you might imagine that there are fixed costs. There's like rent and there's like equipment leasing expense and stuff like that. Like you're going to have that. Lights, you know, electric is probably fixed, right? And then you have this other expense called water, which is actually a variable expense because the more people use machines, the more water expense you have. The reason I mention this, and again, I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to go into this too much, is I always wanted to know how much revenue I needed to meet both my fixed costs and my variable costs. What was my target? Because I can look at that and say, boy, I'm going to have to do a lot of marketing in this month or that month in order to get that revenue. I hope that makes sense. It's outside of the scope of this course a little bit to get into break-even analysis. And uh, break-even point, I think, equals fixed cost divided by contribution margin and all this stuff. We don't really want to talk about that. But if you do a good forecast and you understand the nature of your cost, you'll know what you need to sell to break even. I mentioned it before, risks of accounts receivable. Accounts receivable are amounts that customers owe you. Oof. Here is what I've seen. I've actually written about this. I think it was for Inc. Magazine. I wrote about this. When people get into business, they automatically think they need to provide credit to their customers. That's not always true. And actually, when I was just out of business school, I ran a business with a huge accounts receivable balance. And actually, our, our customer was the government. In case you didn't know, the government doesn't pay their bills real fast. So we were profitable, but it was literally taking the government six months to pay us. Us, by the way, was a three-person company. It wasn't some big company. So can you imagine the stress of not getting a paycheck for six months? So here's my point to you. Remember, when you create accounts receivable, you are basically giving your customers a loan. Do you want to be in the loan business? If I'm starting a plumbing business, a basic plumbing business, a lawn service business, I mean, most businesses, I'm not giving credit. I don't want the word accounts receivable on my balance sheet because I don't want to be collecting money. I want to be paid upon service. So that goes back to another good point. Make it super easy for customers to pay you through PayPal. I don't know. There's all these things out there now that I can't even follow, even though I'm a technology or Venmo, PayPal, all these other things. Get your money fast. Because most businesses don't fail because they're unprofitable. They fail because of cash flow.